Hello second years, this is Dr. Kundart and I think you can just see me in the reflection on the Fields machine. I'm at the Virginia Garcia Clinic in Cornelius and I'm going to make a rather unscripted little video here for you to show you how to run a SWAP visual field. SWAP stands for Short Wavelength Automated Perimetry, otherwise known as a blue-yellow field. It's not used as commonly as it once was when we wake up our machine again uh, because SWAP fields are, are considered um, difficult for a lot of patients to complete. But it's, it's something that's useful, and I think this is the only time in optometry school you're going to learn it. It's something that's useful for older, or rather younger, glaucoma patients, and people that ha are with it enough to, to be able to see the rather strange blue afterimage on the yellow background. But I'll let you see what that looks like. So if you have all the current software on Humphrey's Model 750 Field Analyzer, you're going to see that, that you have both 30-degree and 24-degree fields. There's also things like the, um, the, the Central 10-2 and, and others. Um, but we're generally looking for the C to FAST software for this purpose. When you're usually testing glaucoma patients, you use C to FAST in combination with a 30-2, or you use C to standard in combination with a 24-2. That's in order to keep the, the test patient-friendly, but not to lose too much data. The faster and smaller the field, the more patient-friendly it is, but the more data that you lose. However, for today's purposes, we're going to demonstrate the 24-2 C to FAST. That's about a three-minute field per eye and it's usually quite tolerable to patients, but it has limited data for, for doing threshold fields for glaucoma. And these are all threshold, not screening fields. So I'm gonna hit the 24-2 until we're gonna do the right eye. Normally when you're doing this in clinic, you're gonna have the fields print to Synergy, and that's the server that we use for the data that is, uh, is going to CompuLink. So um, Synergy very much requires to have the right patient ID off the route slip or the patient chart, and also to have the, the proper patient name, usually last name first and first name in the same box, and their date of birth. I'm going to just for now do it with the date of birth, though, because I won't be transferring to Synergy. You're going to come to the regular 24-2 threshold screen here, and uh, you can do all kinds of things from this screen, as you may be aware. But the first thing we're going to have to do here is change parameters to make it a swap field. And you'll see all the parameters here. And right down in the lower left, you'll see the blue-yellow parameters. It's off right now. I'm going to hit the drop-down box if I can get it to go and tell it to turn on the blue-yellow field. It'll automatically change the target color to blue and this, the what's called the stimulus size to size 5. You'll see uh, of the stimulus sizes, that, that is the biggest. And um, again, if I can get this to drop down, it doesn't give me any other choices there for the swap field. So we're going to go ahead and say selection is complete. And normally you'd want to do a foveal threshold. You'll turn the foveal threshold on. Again, for purposes of demonstration, I'm not going to do that. I'm not even going to do the gaze tracking because I'm not actually sitting in the machine. I don't have a patient in front of me now. I'm going to go ahead and say start. And this is what you want to do for your proficiencies. And I, it says extend color visor before the uh, blue-yellow test. Extend the visor. And we're, we're going to show you what that looks like. Notice how yellow the Gonsfeld has become. And if I put my camera inside, you'll see there's a yellow light up top. And that's going to cause glare for the patient. So there's a visor that you can see a little knob for right up here. And you're going to want to extend that so that it blocks the view of the yellow bulb from the patient's point of view. There's the bulb, and there's the visor. OK, so that's been done. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then it'll say it's going to initialize gaze monitor. You're going to want to do this normally with patients, but since there's no one sitting in the machine right now, it's not going to find anyone. I'm going to turn off all fixation monitoring for purposes of demonstration only. You'll only do that in clinic when the patient really can't complete uh, the field with, with uh, steady gaze. And it does make your field un more unreliable. So now it says we must monitor visually on the little camera where the fixation is. And that, that'll be you or your technician. So I'm going to start the field, and let's come around here and see what the targets look like. So if we watch carefully, you're going to see blue lights appear now and then. And we should be running. So we're going to wait and see where they are. There's one on the left, and we're going to see some more here. There's one up top on the left, and there's one on the right. You see how faint those are? Again, what's happening in here is the, the swap field uses the yellow Gonsfeld in order to to make it so that the M and L cones in the fovea are bleached. Yellow is a, is a nice bright color for the L cones, and the M cones can see it pre, pretty well. They're bleached out by the yellow background, leaving only the S cones to react to the stimulus. And we learned yesterday in class that the S cones have, uh, are only about 8% of the, the ganglion cells talk to the coniocellular stream through the S cone bipolars. 
and there have large dendritic trees, these, these uh, so-called bistratified um, layer of the, of the retina. And the bistratified cells, being that they're only 8% of the ganglion cells and they're large, are more susceptible to glaucoma to damage. So if a patient can respond to this target, you should be getting a very sensitive field from them. And we're seeing various variations on this now. We'll learn about different fields when we talk about flicker and contrast. Um, and uh, this, this, this technology may not be used in clinic as much as it used to be, but we may see it come roaring back at some point uh, because it is, it is a very sensitive early way. A lot of you folks, even in your 20s, are going to have a defect on a swap field that will be repeatable. And what that means, uh, just like a defect with autofluorescence in lipofusion under the, the visible retina, uh, remains to be seen. So I hope this has been a useful video for showing you how to run a swap field, the basics of that. When you're done, of course, you have to put the visor back. That's a little notch up top, <laughs> and then go back to a default white-on-white -white perimetry.